Hello and welcome to session three of the unit about making personal change. This unit is titled God's Way, A Loving Solution. We, in the first unit, we looked at taking a snapshot of your life and measuring where you spend your time and then self-reflecting on, on what is happening in your life and how you feel about it. In session two, we looked about cause and effect and how making, um, and how dealing with effects is never going to make changes in your life, not real ones, because you're just dealing with a physical thing. Whereas if you're dealing with a soul-based cause, then there's the op opportunity for a lot of um, positive change. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at God's way of loving solution. Why look at this? As Jesus says, God's way is a way for the heart to change. And it's having faith that love is possible. At the moment, the planet has a real lack of belief in love. And so God's way, or you can listen to the teachings of divine truth as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, also known as A.J. Miller and Mary Lark. And there are many, many hours about God's way and God's truth and what love is and how to love and practical examples and what love is not. And there's a lot of information there. This unit is based on those teachings. It is by taking action and the practical application of the divine truth teachings or God's truth that change and um, actually happens. And so this resource is a real focus on practical application, taking actions in harmony with love, getting an education in what love actually is via your own experience. So I love that about God's way, that it is a way for the heart to change and they have faith that love's possible. And I also do see a lack of love on the planet and it's getting more and more as people want more addictions and they want to be self-interested. Um, that is an unfortunate result of not wanting to love. So God's way is about developing certain qualities that are in harmony with love, so of developing love truth, humility, faith, um, desire, they're all within your capability to develop those qualities. And it's also bringing your heart into agreement with those qualities and into agreement with God's way rather than the world's way. God's way is like, I suppose, some words. And I think in the first century it was called the way. It's basically a way of life. It's an aspiration and a heartfelt desire that must come from an individual person and bringing your life into harmony with God's way. And you could say God's way of love. So what is loving from God's perspective? And it's living, which um, includes living in harmony with God's laws, which as soon as you start living in harmony with God's laws, your life gets smoother, simpler, more good things happen. Uh, you have less stress, you're less worried, you're less like encumbered by all of that sort of noise in your head. You can make decisions faster because you can actually, um, if you have a relationship with God, you can directly ask God and feel how God feels about things, which can very positively influence your decision-making process. You also can connect emotionally and have experiences with emotions because God knows everything about you. God knows every single thing about every one of his children. Like That's what a good parent, such a good parent, and God is so interested in us and wants us to have a relationship with God because that brings God, God so much joy. So God's way is a way of talking about God's laws and qualities and principles and love and just everything really about God's way. So it's sort of like shorthand words for talking about a whole lot of different things. So if we bring our life into harmony with God's way, this brings permanent solutions. It's the most rapid way to progress. And it is about an individual having a heartfelt aspiration for that way of life. And God's way involves having a relationship with God. You can't understand or know God's way if you don't have a relationship with God. So in this presentation, I'm going to cover two ways to progress. But we are going to look um, at, really at God's way in depth and in detail. But there are two different ways. So one way is what we can label natural love. And that is a process of, I suppose you could say it's a bit like ethics. And, and living a life where you treat other people as you'd like to be treated. You can start with ethics and that's a way that you can learn about love. And you can also like 
hit up against God's laws and over time you will get sort of a pain pleasure result and you'll be like oh that's very painful if I keep doing that okay well that's actually brings me more happiness and you will start to develop like the natural love within yourself for your brother or your sister because you'll come to realize that when you treat someone in a truly loving manner that it, it feels better to do that so there is the nat that natural love way I feel that that is a slower way it takes a lot of effort so it's a self-reliant way of making progress. God's way, on the other hand, is that you have a being in the universe. So God is an entity. Uh, God has passions and desires and feelings. And we talked about the human soul in a, previous, um, in a previous presentation. Well, God has all of those same things within God, but they're just all in harmony with love and with truth. So this presentation is to expose you to the idea that there's a difference between the world's way and living God's way. And that living God's way brings a lot of joy and happiness and living the world's way, you're gonna get more of the same of what happens now. And for many people who I speak with, I feel that there's a the lack of fulfillment. They don't feel that much love in their life. They don't feel very connected or uh, joyous or happy or blissful. They're often like trudging through life or trying to get things done. and there's a lot of pain and suffering in a lot of people's lives. And some of people are more aware than, of others than that, and some people are less aware. And this whole little unit is about becoming aware, knowing yourself, coming to understand why you do what you do, coming to understand how causes within your own soul are creating everything that's happening to you in your life, and also to introduce you to that there is a way to rapidly progress and to make positive change in your life. And that is God's way, and that is what we'll be talking about um, in this presentation. So to begin with, where we are at, if we're self-reflecting about it and taking a snapshot, is that we're most likely in living the world's way, living in harmony with what the world thinks, which is really about my way, my perspective, or the world's perspective, and what the world's definitions of love are. And then you can have God's way, God's definitions of love, God's perspective. So how do you get from here, the world's way, to here? God's way. How do you do that? What are the key things in order to bring your life into harmony with God's way, with God's definition of love, with God's perspective? And that's what this um, presentation is about. So firstly, let me introduce you to my friend God. So when we're going to enter a relationship with someone, then we want to know a bit about them. And the key to understanding God's way is to have a relationship with God. So when we um, want to have a relationship, we need to get to know somebody. The only way to get to know somebody is actually to feel their emotions and feelings and how they feel about things. Now, often in the world, we're trying to intellectually understand things and people tell us things and we're believing people's facades and we're believing what they tell us. And often, you may have had this experience yourself, you feel something different, but you're just not really sure why. And when you feel that sort of different thing, often someone's trying to tell you something about themselves which is not actually in harmony with what they feel about what they're talking about. Now, God is never like that. God's feelings are solid, absolute. They are how God feels. God is also a, um, an, an entity and a being in the universe. God has created universes and has created the human soul. He has created you and I. God is like the best parent and the best friend that you possibly can ever imagine better by infinite amounts than any parent that you've ever seen on earth. God is loving, God is truthful, God is direct, God is, um, wants to have a personal relationship with each of us, and God is interested in every single one of us. You can receive love directly from God as a feeling, and you can give God love to God, and it's a gift. God doesn't demand or expect, um, God is, doesn't feel entitled, God just wants, like, it's a pleasure and a joy and makes God, like, God feels very happy when we desire to love and have a relationship with God, but God doesn't demand it or expect us to do it. 
It is a complete free will personal choice if we want to have a relationship. Now, based on that premise, that always makes me think about uh, personal relationships on earth. And that's not really the dynamic that acts out between, if we're talking about parents and families and children, that's not really what plays out between parents and children. We have a lot of expectations and demands on children, and we teach children to have a lot of expectations and demands on adults or on their environment and on other people. So the way that we're parenting, and that will be the ne um, next session is how the world has got it so wrong, is if we're taking the example of God as this beautiful parent who loves us completely, then we are very out of harmony with that while we continue to live in the world's way. God has a passionate desire to, to know and, and, and love us. If we have a desire to know and, a, and want to have a relationship with God, God would love to share every single thing that God can with us about love and truth and about any question that we have. And any question can be answered. The key is how um, open you are to receiving those answers. So this is a beautiful thing about God's feedback system is if you don't get an answer, if you have a longing or a prayer, and we'll talk a bit about that, um, a prayer is like a heartfelt longing or a desire coming from your heart. If it's in harmony with love and truth um, and it's a pure heartfelt desire, it will be answered. God wants to answer any um, desire that we have, any loving desire that we have immediately. Like God answers that because God loves when we have desires. As Jesus has said, God responds to explicit desires. So when we are truthful and open and expressive of the desire that we have, then God responds to that. God wants to help us. God wants, to, wants us to be so happy, like blissfully happy. That is a desire that God has for each of his children, but that's up to each of us as an individual whether we want to actually do that as well. God communicates with, um, with us via feelings. It's a soul-to-soul -soul interaction. So it's, it's like an immediate reaction. If you ask something from God and you're not receiving an immediate answer, well, then there's something in you that is blocking the reception of the truth that God is trying to give to you. And that's a great feedback system because you can go, okay, what in me is blocking this? Do I really want to know the answer? Or what emotion do I have that doesn't want to feel what God is telling me? Why am I you know, blocked to, to receiving information directly from God? So these are some feedback systems that you can have. But I imagine God is just the best friend and the best parent that there ever is. And God wants to love me. I can receive love directly from God. I can receive truth directly from God. And the key thing to remember is that love and truth go together. So without truth, you're not being loving. So uh, truth is not just words. Truth is a feeling as well. And truth and love go together. So now I've introduced you to God. The next question is, how do you get to know God? So it's just like any other relationship where you're interested in another person. You're going to want to spend time with them. You're going to want to get to know how they feel about everything. And this is the same principle of getting to know God. You need to have an interest in God and, and to find out how God feels about things and um, how God feels about you and how God feels about the world and how God feels about what you're doing and how God feels about God and what are God's feelings about love and truth and what does God love and what are God's goals and aspirations and what are goals, you know, what does God desire for, for the earth? And there's so many things that you can ask from God and, and, uh, and find out. And they're the same things that you'd want to know from if you're building a friendship on earth with any other person. And if you're genuinely interested in that person. Um, sadly, often on the earth, people are more self-interested and they like people to be interested in them. So you don't always have a feeling of wanting the other person to grow and develop and their best interests at heart and wanting to give them the gift of your love even if they don't love you back. A lot of relationships on earth are barter-based or wanting addictions met. Um, barter-based meaning I'll give you this if you give me that, not just based on a pure feeling of delight and love of that other person. So getting to know God is just like having any other relationship. You might not be able to see God but you can feel God. And if you go through a resensitization process to your emotions, you will feel and you'll feel God's feelings about things. And that's a lovely experiment to experiment with is feeling how God feels. And you can begin that right now. It's not something you have to wait for. God, um, as soon as you have a, a pure desire and you have an open heart or I suppose your soul, I interchange heart with soul, but your soul 
is a direct communication with God and God can directly communicate with you as soon as you desire that. God is cool because God doesn't wait around, you know, like how parents sometimes like take ages and there's not instant. God's instant. If, you, if you're in harmony with love and you want it, God gives you that. Like there's so many cool things that happen in life once you start understanding God's laws and you live, start living in harmony with them. You go from all this stuff happening, you kind of feel clueless and you don't even know why it's all happening and often it feels quite painful and bad. And then there's the flip side to that as well is that once you start living in harmony with God's love, all these good things start happening. And at first I was like, couldn't really understand. Like I was like, well, all these good things are happening, but I don't really understand why they're happening. And over time I've realized because there's certain feelings in me that change, certain desires that I have, and God was trying to help me to, to grow and to fill those, fulfill those desires. And then every time that certain fears or um, emotions come up that are actually out of harmony with love, all of those things sort of shut down for a while and then I need to feel through something else and then all of these things open up again. So God is, try, is giving us all of these loving opportunities so that we can grow and that we can change and we can develop. So an exercise that is worth doing is self-reflecting on how do you feel about God? How do you feel about this entity? And what are your real feelings about God? And how do you even contemplate God? Are you angry at God? Are you you know, sad at God? Do you blame God? Like, what do you feel? So this is a place where you can take a snapshot about your relationship with God or your lack of relationship with God, or maybe your non-existent relationship with God. You can even just start self-reflecting on the feeling of how do you feel about the word God? Start wherever you are at. So that's a principle that's important to remember. Start where you're at. Don't try and fabricate a relationship. Just be honest with yourself, be truthful with yourself about where you are at and how you feel. What do you feel about this? Do you want to just turn off this video now that I've mentioned God? <laughs> and if that is the case, you've got some feelings to feel, you know, or do you feel like, oh, maybe it's a possibility of I've got a different concept or maybe she's saying some things that I haven't heard or considered before or she's saying things and I don't feel that. And that's where you're at. So allow yourself to feel, as I said in the introductory presentation for this unit, let yourself feel what you feel and investigate it further. Find out why, what's contributed to your feelings and why you um, find yourself feeling and acting and doing the things that you do in your everyday life right now. So to practically apply that um, part that we have just discussed about how to get to know God and how to have a relationship with God and who is God, you can actually start an experiment immediately and you can actually just ask God about those things. You can do an experiment where you actually long for God's love and you can ask God how God feels about you and allow yourself to be open to whatever happens with that. And often when I, well, when I feel, receive a feeling from God, I feel quite a lot of grief or emotions or sadness or um, it's not always just all this blissful feelings because often what's happening is the feeling from God is exposing in me the lack of that feeling. So, you know, if you long for some love, maybe you actually cry because there's a lot of feelings um, in you about having not been loved in your past and how you've not been loving to others as well in your past. Um, so what I'm saying is just keep an open mind and don't try and manufacture or fabricate the feelings. Just let yourself feel whatever you feel about, um, about that when you long and what answer you receive from God. And if you have no response, well, there's some feedback as well. Why are you blocked to receiving love? So that's something that you can look at. So you can start an experiment right now with experimenting with God's feelings um, and, feel, and receiving feelings from God. And that is a process of just longing, having a heartfelt desire and a feeling towards God of wanting to know an answer to a question. And you can long and ask God to receive love you can ask God to, about anything in your life. You know, you can ask how you treat women or children or um, men or what is it that, um, like how God feels about you or how God feels about what you're doing in your life. So experimenting with God's feelings and feeling God's feelings is something that you can try immediately and you will get feedback. Remember that God communicates via emotions and via feelings. And so you'll need to open up to those feelings and that might be a block that you have straight off the bat that you, you, don't feel, um, you don't receive feelings from God because you need to actually work through your beliefs and your flawed definitions of love about emotions themselves. But God wants to give you feelings 
and wants to answer your pure desires. So just keep the experiment on repeat and work through whatever feedback you get about what's blocking you from receiving feelings from God. So the feedback systems that I spoke about in the cause and effect presentation were are also a way to get to know God and that God can communicate with us and give us information. And those, um, just to review those, there's the direct communication with God directly, which again is a process of opening your heart to feeling and to recognizing. Because once you're up into feelings, there's also spirit communication and, they, and spirits can help too. So people who don't have a physical body, we talked about how the soul was the real you and we have a spirit body and a physical body. So people who have no longer got a physical body, they also can communicate with you. And some spirits have really loving feelings and at times, some people mistake those feelings for God, and they're different. God feels very different to spirits feel. We can also build friendships and relationships with spirits, and they can help us to also learn about love with, um, as we go along. As with any person on earth, some influences are more loving than others. And so it's about, feel, again, feeling and becoming sensitive to what influence is influencing you. And the more sensitive you become to your feelings, the more you can feel when a spirit's intention is loving or when it's unloving. And the more you educate yourself in love, then the more you can understand that as well. So we have spirit friends, and then we also have people on earth who know more about love than we do and don't know more about God. And so you can actually ask them questions or they can also give you feedback. So feedback and communication systems are very helpful. You can get communication and feedback and learn about love and about God via direct communication with God, via the conscience. Um, and God's built that uh, truth channel, in the, what, what I refer to as the truth channel, with everyone with the consciences. You can also receive um, information and God can communicate with you via God's laws. So God's got a framework to that's not direct communication with, with God, but that's God trying to teach you about God's laws and about God's way. Um, one of the God's laws is the law of attraction. And that if you watch it closely, particularly if you've longed to God for certain feelings, and then you can just observe um, and reflect on, on God's laws and see what God is trying to show you about your blocks, possibly to your relationship with God or to things that are causing you unhappiness in your life or to what is happening in your life. And you can review that and then seek the causes, deal with those and then emotionally open and develop your humility in order that you can understand more and that you can grow a relationship with God. So why God's way is the fastest way to grow is that when you have a relationship with God, it's the fastest way to learn about love because you can, when you receive the feeling of love from God or you feel God's feelings about certain things, then you get, you have a lot of knowledge and understanding directly from the source of like, well, of or creation and so you get um, the feeling of love sort of works on your soul and causes you to realize oh there's a lot of unloving things um, that I'm doing and that are in my soul and that I'm actions that I'm taking and so it's like God's love is like brings clarity and when I say love I mean God's love and truth because that's they go together and it brings a lot of clarity and a lot of understanding about where you're out of harmony with love where others have been out of harmony with love with you and where you've been out of harmony with love with them. It's a feeling that you get of, no, this is wrong or this is right. And so uh, from, from a love-based perspective, from God's perspective. And so it's sort of faster than having to nut it all out in your head and try and figure out if it is loving or it's not loving. Like when I first heard the teachings of divine truth, I heard in my ears and I thought that I understood, but because it was through my own emotional filters, I was just changing my physical behavior and not actually dealing with the emotional cause that was creating all of the pain in my life. And so all of the pain didn't change, like didn't go away. And though I changed the physical action, I still had the same feelings about everything because I hadn't actually emotionally experienced those feelings and released them. And that caused a lot of, like not really any change to happen, which was a great feedback system of going, well, if you just change your actions, then there's no change. And that's a principle that I've been saying in the last um, two videos. And it's, it's a fact. There is no, the only change is soul-based emotional change. If you don't do, work through the emotions, 
there is no change. And I mean the emotions and the soul-based causes because you can feel a whole lot of what you could class as self-deception emotions or uh, emotions, crying in your addictions or feeling emotions in your addictions. And they're not going, that's just effect-based crying. It's not real or effect-based emotional um, um, emotions, which is not actually feeling the emotional cause or the reason why all of these things are happening in your life. And that is a thing, a key thing to look out for is when you're just deceiving yourself and wanting to look like you're being emotional or you're having these emotions, but they're all crying about effects, not causes. So some key things for a relationship with God and developing that relationship is um, truth. God can work with us when we're truthful. The greatest disservice that we can do to ourselves is be untruthful with ourselves and with others, but particularly ourselves, because if we're lying to ourselves, there's no way that we can change. And if we're lying to ourselves or we're creating facades, which is a lie, and you're presenting a lie to the world about who you are and what you feel, well, it's very hard to make any change in that situation. And God can't help you. So truth and being honest about what you really feel, what you think, like I used to remind myself that were my thoughts, deeds and, um, and words all, all in, in harmony. And that meant like basically my soul-based feeling, was I expressing that with my words and what I was thinking? Or was I trying to think something different than what I felt? And was I saying something different than what I felt? And I could, oh, I just experimented with that. And I just noticed that when my, my feelings, my words and my thoughts all matched up, there was a lot of, a lot of good things happened. Um, and I was able to connect to emotion much quicker. When my, my feelings and my thoughts or my words were different, uh, over time, I no, this all feels wrong. And you can feel when a person is, is doing that, when they're not actually connected to what they feel and they're just saying things. And it feels quite different. It feels like they're, they're detached from, from themselves. God wants you to be completely attached and completely connected to your soul and how you feel every single moment of every single day. And that uh, brings a lot of joy and happiness when you are and you get to know yourself, like you really get to know yourself, who you are. And that's a wonderful thing to do, a really wonderful thing to do. So there's a whole heap of things you can reflect on from just the small amount that we've discussed so far in this presentation. Um, God, your relationship with God, why you don't want to have a relationship with God, why you haven't thought of having a relationship with God, uh, about love and truth. How do you feel about love and truth? And how do you feel about, you know, do you have the world's definition of love and truth or do you have God's definition of love and truth? Do you even want God's definition of love and truth? And if you do, what is that? Like, how do you find that out? How do you gain an education in love? Where do you start? You know, it, sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming because I know when I first heard about it, it was like my entire worldview got turned upside down of like, wow, I'm not a loving person. Like, I'm not an, even a nice person half the time. And when I say that, I'm saying because I now see nice as being loving. And it was like at the beginning when I first heard Divine Truth, it was just like my whole life was like, it was like having like an expose or um, as Jesus and Mary would talk and I'd listen to the, the presentations that they gave, I would just be like remembering all of these things that I did that were just completely unloving or all of the things I was doing that were really out of harmony with love. And there were some things that I really loved about the teachings of divine truth that really helped me when all of these things, like my life was sort of being thrown into um, the spotlight, if you like, about how unloving every, um, it had been and the choices that I was making that were still unloving. And those, some of those things were like, well, no, love rules the universe. Uh, love is actually the reality of the universe. That's what God has made. Like everything in the world actually responds to love. Or, and God's laws are all loving and they're based on love and they respond in that way. So the more loving I am, and when I, again, when I say loving, it's loving and truthful, but the more loving I am, then the more in harmony with God's laws I am and then the greater joy and happiness and the better my life is and the simpler it is and the smoother it is and there's so many positive benefits. And so what I kept aspiring to is like I want to love. Like so I had, there were um, a number of qualities that I really focused on and that was love, truth, faith, humility, took some action. So there were five qualities that I just kept going back to and I examined my life with those things. 
I said, okay, this, this problem or this issue is in my life. I'm okay, what's going on? Is there a lack of love? Is there a lack of truth? Is there a lack of humility? Is there a lack of faith? Is there a lack of desire here? Is there a lack of all five of those qualities? <laughs> Where, what can I do to change that? What can I do to grow those qualities? What, what in me is not in harmony with those qualities? What in me is not in love with, um, is not in harmony with love and God's, God's way? And so it's sort of like love is God's way. And so if we don't have an education in love, it's very hard. And I feel exceptionally grateful to Jesus and Mary for sharing freely the teachings of divine truth. And I do suggest to go and peruse those at your you know, leisure um, in the fact that there's so many things that I had not considered before I started listening to all of those things. And as I said, this, this little unit is and series of videos is just about practically applying those teachings to your life. So if this is the first time you've listened to Divine Truth or the first time you've even heard mention of it, I do suggest to go over and listen to some of it. And you probably, as you work through and do some of the experiments, you'll want more um, information and to understand what to do and um, why things are happening and, and how the universe works even. And there's some really great presentations. So I asked the question of how do you get an education in love? Well, as I mentioned, the teachings of divine truth, uh, for me, that's how I've been getting it to get educated in love. I heard certain truths and I then started experimenting. Exactly what I'm suggesting to you to do in these videos is um, listen to truth and then experiment with it. Apply it practically. Do it. Do what is suggested. You don't have much to lose. I'm just saying it works. It's good. Um, but you need to have the experience yourself to know that to be true. It's completely up to your choice and decision whether or not you want to engage this process. And that's the way God has created and designed it, that it has to come from your heart and your desire and your heartfelt aspiration to do this, because then you will do it. Then you will make the change. If you don't have a desire, if you don't have an aspiration, you will not do it. You just won't. Like I know for certain, you won't. You do what you desire. You do what, like emotions, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, emotions, I'm like, I don't have emotions or emotions, they, rule, they don't rule my life. Or, but emotions is ruling everyone's life. Every single person's life is ruled by your emotions, either the avoidance of your emotions or trying to get emotions. Um, even when you're depressed, that's an avoidance of rage and you're shutting the rage down and suppressing it. Well, that's a, a choice to suppress emotion. So all of these uh, things, like we need to give up the, the belief in us that somehow emotion is not a good thing. Emotion is a normal thing that you're born to cope with, that God has designed your soul to actually communicate even with God and has designed your soul to feel. And we have just chosen and have been educated badly by the world, and it is bad. And so the re-education process you know, is about, okay, what is love? What does, you know, what, how does this universe function? And if you can understand those things, then your life can become a lot better, a lot faster in every area, every area of your life. It's a bit like the cause and effect. If you deal with a cause in your soul, then all the effects, you know, are, um, dissipate. But if you, and the same thing with love, the more love that you get in the soul, then that has an effect as well. And it has positive effects. So this is the beauty of, of living God's way, bringing your life into harmony with God's way, is you start to be educated that, oh, wow, the more love that I receive, then the more naturally loving you are with other people and with yourself, um, the more truthful you just are without even thinking about it. And that's what I love about God's way. There's so many self-help things where you have to put in a heap of physical effort, but it's for very little actual practical change. God's truth is practical, it's to the point, it's logical. The more you connect emotionally, the more logical you actually become. The more, um, and when I say that, it's, you might be feeling something, but afterwards you get a lot of clarity about what has happened or what is happening and it's a lot easier to make good decisions that benefit many or all people because they're loving rather than just benefiting you or your own family. Love is an equalizer, it, love is equal. And that is a beautiful thing about love as well. In our world, there's a lot of superiority and inferiority dynamics set up. There's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a lack of equality between genders, between um, races, between all kinds of people. And these are learnt 
um, these are like injured beliefs and injured emotions in there and um, problems in our soul that need to be released so that we actually treat everybody equally and we actually love them. So the first way that I found to learn about love and which has been for me the most life-changing, the best way is um, God's truth. And as I said, divinetruth.com is an area to explore to find out more about that. Um, part of what I learnt via the teachings of divine truth was about ethics and morality. Ethics being like the golden rule of treating others as you'd like to be treated. Morality in very simplistic terms being about what is right from God's perspective and what is wrong or unloving from God's perspective. So what is right and loving from God's perspective and what is, um, is unloving from and, yeah, and wrong from God's perspective. And morality, unless you have a relationship with God, it's hard to know what is moral. So, that's, um, so to begin with, I began with ethics. Would I like to be treated like that? And not, um, and not how I am being treated or not how I do treat others, but would I like it? So for instance, you could take, let's take a semi, like you smack a child and you think that physical violence is like that. Just, just look at yourself and go, do I like to be hit? with a feeling of punishment and anger and rage towards myself or a feeling of, um, you know, be smacked with a feeling of fear and anger behind it. Do I like that? Or I know, honestly, I don't know anyone who would really like that, who would enjoy that, who would be happy about that. And it's something to examine. Well, if you're doing that, then you're being unethical and you're being unloving. Now, ethics is something that you do need to examine quite closely because sometimes you can be being ethical, but it isn't loving. And that's something that as you learn and get educated about love, then you come to see more about that. But as a starting point, there's a lot of things you can work out via ethics of like, yep, I wouldn't like that, then I shouldn't do it to others. Again, as I mentioned, you know, if your addiction's in the way and you quite like when someone commiserates with you and you want them to commiserate with you and then you commiserate back, well, that's ethical if you're both commiserating for the same purpose and the same reason and the same topic, but it's not loving to commiserate with another person because you're basically telling them that they can't handle their emotions and that you agree that they shouldn't have to feel their emotions when God actually has designed us to be humble and it's loving to be humble and feel your emotions. So you're out of harmony with love in that situation. So in this presentation, we have talked about how God's way is a way for the heart to change and having faith that love is possible. And we've also talked about developing qualities, um, love-based qualities of love, truth, humility, faith, and action, um, and desire or aspiration, and how God's way is about bringing your own heart into harmony with living God's way. And this also means you'll be living in harmony with God's laws. Uh, we talked about some of the benefits of living in harmony with God's way and actually developing a relationship with God. Talked about, I introduced you to my friend God, and how God um, and suggested some experiments that you can try in order to begin to develop a relationship with God. We have also looked at um, how the world works and that the world actually is governed and um, run by love. And that if that's based on that premise, how do you then get an education in love from God's perspective in order that you can change? And we've mentioned um, the feedback systems that God's already trying to educate us with love that happen. In the world, we've also talked about how there's some teachings called divine truth teachings as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene that are very helpful to gain an education in love. And there's also the um, how you can use ethics as a beginning point to measure and start experimenting in your own life. Like, would you like that to happen to you? And you can measure quite rapidly some things. And as I also said, there's a bit of a caution in that too, because not everything that you think is ethical is going to be loving. And in this um, unit, we are focusing on making personal change in a positive direction, and the positive is being in a loving direction. So there's a key question, and you can reflect on that too, of do I want to love? In my experience, I've just gone back to again and again and again, do I want to love? Do I want to love? And you can ask it in any situation, and it's sort of like a a principle, I suppose, that you can apply um, in any situation. And I want to talk about principles because principles are a really powerful way to get to know God and also to reflect where you're at with love. 
And so principles are things that, why they're so powerful is that they can be applied to any situation. So you can, um, for instance, like we've, we've talked about, like look at yourself first, um, that you are responsible for your own personal change, uh, like speak the truth all the time is a principle. Truth is always loving is a principle. Do like, um, am I being lo like, you can look at, well, what is loving in this situation or do I want to love? And these can be applied over um, any situations. Another principle would be like, like, I know it's loving to feel my emotions in this situation. I didn't want to, I, I just wanted to project my emotions. Projecting emotion being when you have, you're, have, you're denying a feeling and then your, um, your emotions coming out of you, but you're not feeling it. And so the projection then is an unloving interaction with others because you have basically like, it's, I imagine it's sort of like a, a spray gun. It's like you're going, no, no, um, shut down that emotion. I don't want to feel that emotion. And then it just projects out of you just like everywhere. <laughs> So it's better to feel your emotions than actually like spray them out everywhere. And that's something that you can become educated about. And again, you can apply it practically to your own situation and start examining your life of like, wow, when am I, you know, shutting down my emotions and then what's happening? And if you've got children or even if you're in a partner relationship or even if you've just got friends, you can actually then see how they respond when you have certain feelings going on and you can start assessing and um becoming aware and growing your awareness of what happens when you have certain feelings and how people respond in that situation. So some other things that you can do right now um, to start your experimentation. Often I do like do some journaling and you can look at like we've talked about a lot of different things and sort of just introduced you to some concepts. You can do some various self-reflections and in one column you could have ways to connect to and get to know God. And some of those I've mentioned in this presentation and some of them you could add to that list. And then you could have another column that has um, what inhibits my relationship with God, what in you that you can identify immediately is causing you not to have a relationship with God. And so that's a reflection exercise that you can do. That gives you some data or some good information that you can then start focusing on areas and actually reflecting and feeling emotionally about, well, why do you have that belief or why do you have those feelings? You can also do another reflection exercise about God's perspective and the world's and your perspective and start looking at what God's feelings and God's truth about love is and what your flawed definitions of love are. You can do that on any subject, whatever you can do it about how God feels about me, how you feel about you, how God feels about, you know, the way that you treat children, how God treats children, how um, God um, feels about the way I treat my partner, how you actually feel about the way you treat your partner. And there's, um, you know, on yourself, there's just so many questions that you can add into that as some self-reflection exercises. There are only benefits to living God's way and living God's way is key to personal happiness. The more that I grow my relationship with God, the more I get to know God, the more that I live God's way, the better my life becomes. And when I say that, in every way, in unimaginable ways, uh, there are so many things that have happened in my life over the last years that I just didn't even think would happen. Um, and all just so beautifully positive. I feel like I'm more connected with myself. I know myself better. I have a better sense of myself. I can feel now and there's such a relief in being emotionally connected there's so many benefits from living god's way and in the family and parent dynamic it's a really beautiful gift that you can do is to choose to love and as i said if you choose not to do it god's way and do it the natural love way choosing to love is just such a big gift for the kids and um who you know uh, your kids or kids in your care as i say because from today we've established that God is our real parent. And if God's our real parent, parent, then we're just older siblings to the children in our care or guardians and their first teachers. But as a teacher, you can't teach something that you have not experienced or you don't understand. It's just a good idea until you actually apply it. This is part of this unit is about practical application. Do it yourself so that you actually understand what it is. I talked about how just to look out for being hypocritical and wanting kids to change and you don't actually make the effort. So children, um, giving the gift of love in your family environment is quite, like is, there's just 
there's just so many benefits. Some of those are that a child gets to express and be themselves. They get to feel their emotions and be emotionally connected to themselves. They have um, the opportunity to actually be connected with God and have a relationship with God from a very young age, which means that they can figure out what's right and wrong. They can figure out how to live in harmony with God's laws faster. If you're demonstrating that and upholding that in your family, then you're now creating a loving space for a child to grow up in. You're actually creating a loving space for anyone who comes into that environment. And if both parents uphold love, uh, uphold love and if you want to br- and bring their lives into harmony with God, then a child will grow up in an environment where they're accepted, they're equal, they know that they're worthy, there's not addictions in play. I'm talking about like if you've really worked or done a lot of work here. But even if you have that aspiration and you start working to these positive results, their academics will, will improve, their physical life will improve. If they know that they can feel emotions and actually can be humble, that is one of the greatest gifts you can give to anybody, um, particularly children, is to allow them to actually have their emotional expression. Another gift is to teach them about the relationship with God because that's the key Once you have a relationship with God, you're really well on your way because you can find out anything. You don't need to rely on anyone. You don't need someone else to tell you or to teach you. You become self-responsible. And self-responsible has so many beneficial effects as well. Like It makes you feel good when you're self-responsible. You know that you can handle any situation. And when I say self-responsible, that covers like emotional self-responsibility. You know you can cope with your own emotions. You know that that is up to you to feel them and you can apply that in every area of your life. So the beauty of divine truth teachings and practically applying them to your life, there's always positive results that always your life gets better. And when I say that, there is just a something to look out for is that sometimes it might not feel better immediately because there's certain painful emotions and certain painful things like things that have caused pain to others or to ourselves in our past. And there is a period of time that we need to work through those things. And it's like, you know, there's, you've got your history and your past where you've been very unloving and that needs to be um, corrected and unraveled and worked through. And so you can become educated about why you've done the things that you've done and what happened then. And once that, you know, you work through that and at the same time, if you're making loving decisions from this point onwards, then your life will get better. But there is pain from your past. And when you're feeling pain, it feels painful. When you're feeling terrified, you feel terrified. You don't feel like elated and blissful about that. You don't. You go through the emotions of feeling it. So this is not a, um, you're not going to just feel good all the time by doing this process. But you will eventually get to a point where you feel good all the time if you get to have a relationship with God and you actually bring your soul into harmony with God's way of love and you accept the truth about love and you actually start Uh, Like if you have that love in your soul, you and you act in harmony with it, because you can act in disharmony with feelings that you've received from God. But if you act in harmony with the love you receive, and you continue to aspire and grow and and receive more love and become a more loving person, then you will get to a point where you're at one with God, meaning you're at one in harmony with totally with God's way of love and how God loves. You will also reflect and demonstrate that love. Um, and if you get to that point, then you will be, you know, and then you have the potential to be in a, in a state of bliss and complete loving existence for the rest of your life. But to get there, that takes a personal effort. It takes time. It takes um, you learning a lot of lessons about love and truth. And you need to come to know yourself and understand yourself and feel your real nature and personality and be and express your nature and personality. And all of those things are a journey to learn about about things. All of those things are loving to do, but it's not always going to feel all fluffy and nice in your life. There are certain things that have happened and that you have done that have either caused pain or been done that were painful to you, and there is pain to feel and release. In this presentation, I presented just two ways to progress. One was the natural love way, which I didn't really go into depth about, but I just presented that that's a possibility. And then there's God's way, and that is about um, bringing your life and your heart and or your soul into harmony with the way God loves. And we talked about how the world's way and how you know and God's way, and how do you get there? And we discussed some things about that as well. So 
There's things that you can practically apply from this presentation about uh, investigating a relationship with God and also investigating and finding out more about yourself. There'll be a presentation after this that is just presenting a diagram of some of the skills and tools and qualities to develop that we have just discussed in these first three videos. And these first three videos have been about just how to progress, some things that you can begin immediately in order to start actually making personal change. And so they're practical things you can apply immediately. In session four, we're gonna look at why God made the provision to be a parent and also how the world has got it so wrong. This will include like, just ways that we go commonly wrong on earth as parents and how if we have that relationship with God, we can actually find out what a, real, what a loving parent would actually do. And this, because we're applying this unit to parenting, as you could say it's like I've, I've said it's how to make personal change and how to become a loving individual. But the focus in these presentations is towards practical application for parents and families. Again, anyone can practically apply all of these things because it's principles, but it is looking at the parent-family dynamic. And so you could say it's how to become a loving parent. And the next presentation is looking at, well, what is a, a parent and how does God view parents, like uh, the role of a parent on earth? And also then how does the world do that? And so we're now crossing over of like world's way and God's way. And what does that look like in real life? I will see you in the next presentation.